I've worked on the disease to please a lot. And as you've heard me say, that in 1989, I had a really big breakthrough with that, reading Gary Zukov's book on intention. So I started literally living an intentional life where I don't make any decisions unless I think about what is my true, pure motivation for doing it. Because I do recognize the law of cause and effect that says the intention informs even the cause. So that before you have an action, there is a reason for you taking that action. And the reason for the action is what's going to actually show up in your life on the other end. That's what's going to come back to you, uh, that intention. So that helped me a lot with the disease to please because I was always giving, 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 giving. And then I was always so thrilled when people would come back and and ask for more. And I couldn't understand why they were asking for more. Well, people ask for more because your reason for giving it is so that they think that you're nice. That's your real intention. Well, they do think you're nice. They do think you're nice. And that is why they keep coming back. They come back because you're the nice one. You're going to say yes when even you mean no. So you're the person I'm going to call to go pick up my kids when I can't or don't want to because you're going to say yes even if you don't want to do it. So that's why people keep coming back when your intention is not really clear. So that took a lot of fear away from me. But at least for me, clarity of intention helped me live a more fearless life. You cannot live a brave life without disappointing some people. But those people who get disappointed, it's really okay. The people who really care for you, the people who are rooting for your rise will not be disappointed. The only people who are disappointed are people who have their own agenda. And their agenda is not aligned with your agenda. And that's how I make myself pray. I say, well, the people who really care about you, who want you, who are rooting for your rise, those people who are rooting for your rise, they're going to be okay when you say no. I never read any comments that are coming from negative people. If I start to read something and shut it down, I will, I will, I will, not, ta I will not take that in. I have a kitchen cabinet, and I've had a kitchen cabinet since the beginning of my career. Different people have been in that ki kitchen cabinet over the years, but there are a few people who are my resource who I know are going to tell me the truth. Your cabinet can go through all of those comments, you know, because feedback is great and you can get it immediate now. Your cabinet will go through and they can share with you the things even that are negative, but that are not mean-spirited. Uh, I'd, I'd come off the glory and the victory of 25 years of the Oprah show and was trying to put together the pieces of building a network without the right pieces. I really was trusting other people's ideas about how to do it. And it wasn't until I had the good sense to bring in my own team of people who I'd been working with, whom I'd been working with for, you know, the past decade, that things start to actually fall into place for me. And, you know, one of the great, great, great things about uh, Fernie doing uh, interviews all these years on The Oprah Show and on OWN was that I got to learn from other people's mistakes. So I paid really close attention to the stories and I got to hear everything and everybody, all the theories and all the stories and all the layers and layers of dysfunction along with people's victories and their triumph. I took it in. I was a student of it. I wasn't just a talk show host. I was a student. I became a student of life, other people's lives, and how to live well by listening to those stories. So I paid, I paid real attention. And at a point in my life when I, where I can literally rejoice in the, the, the knowing space that I hold. There's a sense of confidence that can only come, I think, when you know and are assured that you are living life well and not from the point of view of having a lot of things, um, but living life from this from, from the from the center space when you're when you're living bravely. When you're living bravely because you're living your truth. It was during my show that I absolutely learned for sure for myself through other people's stories that there really isn't any such thing as failure. And I could see the thread of courage that was required every time you fell down. I could also see, I could also see that failure was just there 
to inform you to move in a different direction. It's just there to say, hey, not this way, over here, not over there, wrong place. And once I figured that out, it became easier to be brave. For me, education is about the most important thing because, ha because that, was that is what liberated me. Education is what liberated me. The ability to read saved my life. I would have been an entirely different person had I not been taught to read when I was at an early age. My entire life experience, my ability to believe in myself, and even in my darkest moments of sexual abuse and being physically abused and so forth, I knew there was another way. I knew there was a way out. I knew there was another kind of life because I'd read about it. I'd read about it. I knew there were other places and, and there was another way of being. And so it saved my life. So that's why I now focus my attention on trying to do the same thing for other people, education. I don't think you ever stop giving. I really don't. I think it's an ongoing process. And it's not just about being able to write a check. It's being able to touch somebody's life in such a way that Mrs. Duncan touched mine. It's being able to make a child see the light in him or herself, making someone else see that for themselves. I know that if I didn't have the money, listening to somebody who had it, I'd probably not believe them because you can't believe it. Because if you don't have money and you're just trying to make ends meet, you think if you just could make ends meet, that would make everything all right for you. What I know is, is that if you do work that you love and work that fulfills you, the rest will come. And that I truly believe that the reason I've been able to be so financially successful is because my focus has never, ever for one minute been money. And the fact that the money has come has really surprised me. I've been just really surprised and delighted and very p pleased and many times overwhelmed by it. But the money has never been the focus. The reason, you know, I think if you know, if you're on the road to success is if you would do your job and not be paid for it. And I would do this job and take on a second job to make ends meet if nobody paid me just for the opportunity to do it. That's how you know you're doing the right thing. One of the things that, if I may pat myself on the back for, is that I try to surround myself with people who are smarter than I am. I think that the ability to be as good as you can be comes from understanding who you are and what you can and cannot do. And what you can't do is far more important than what you can do if what you can't do is going to keep you from flying as high as you can. Now, when I, my lawyer first came to me and said, you can own your own show, it literally took the ceiling off my brain because I had never even thought that high before. I never even thought that was possible. And everybody needs somebody in their life to say, yes, you can do it. I have a niece, pardon me, I have a niece who's um, 15, who several years ago, I said to her the same thing my father said to me. I said, you are too smart to get C's. I mean, I heard my father speaking, we were crossing the street one day and she was, talking about her grades, you're too, you're too smart to do that. You could, do, you could be an A student. And she said, do you really think I can? Oh, of course. So you're such a bright person. And she started getting A's and said to me a year later, nobody ever told me I could. And I, you know, I think one of the most important lessons to learn is that we are all responsible for our lives, but nobody gets through this life alone. Everybody needs somebody to show them a way out or way up, everybody does. See, I feel best in, in surroundings where other people are smarter than I am because I feel like I can always learn something from them. One of the other big lessons I've learned, particularly in business, I think you have a responsibility to yourself to learn as much about your business as you can. And so I sign every check, although it is now tedious because the bills that come in from running, maintaining a studio, everything from Federal Express to Xerox to every tape that needs to be repaired and so forth, it gets to be a lot. I have stacks and piles of, of checks to do, and I know that there are a lot of successful people who don't do that. I still have a tenement mentality. I've been very, very poor in my life. And so the idea of having uh, money and not being responsible and knowing how much money you have and keeping control of it, it's not something that I personally can accept. I know that there are other people who can, but it's, it's just, it is not a possibility for me. I need to know where it is. I mean, there are times I think I wanna to go to the bank and say, show it to me because, you know, just seeing it on a piece of paper, anybody could print out a piece of paper. So, um, you yeah, know, I watch it very carefully and um, 
try to maintain responsibility for it. But my success in business has come, you know, when I first started being a quote businesswoman, I worried about how do you do this? And I realized that you do this the same way uh, as you do anything else. You be fair, try to be honest with other people and you be fair. What I know for sure is if you focus on the substance, the success will come. And most importantly, let failure be your friend. There are going to be times, of course, where you're going to win a lot. A lot of things are going to go your way. And it's wonderful to bask in that adulation and to feel proud of your successes. But it's the times when things go wrong, when you fall or fail, that you're actually going to learn the most about yourself. You know, all those years on The Oprah Show, 25 years. We were the number one show for 25 years, and that's because I lived with the intention to serve the audience. When I was able to shift the paradigm to start to looking at, wow, what I have instead of what I don't have, what I have instead of what I thought I'd lost, I was able to begin to turn things around. But it's those moments of being of uncertainty. It's the moments where all of my mistakes show up on the evening news. I can tell if I've done something wrong, it's on the CNN crawl, I can read about it. But learning from the moments where things weren't going so great, being able to get still, to connect with that which I know is God, the force, the power greater than myself, and to come back and realize that in order to move forward, you move forward by taking the next right step. You don't have to know everything to do. You don't have to know all the steps to make. Just what is the next right move?